10 Disturbing Origin Stories Behind Your Favourite Companies Number 10. Nintendo Sex Hotels Nowadays, they're famous for their heroic plumbers, well-dressed apes, and running out of ideas for Pokemon years ago. But there was a time when Nintendo was renowned for much less family-friendly products, love hotels. During the 60s, Nintendo president Hiroshi Yamauchi explored a variety of business ventures. One of these was a chain of love hotels, hotels in the Tokyo Red Light District that are essentially served as a place to take prostitutes. Though not much is known about Nintendo's specific chain, love hotels are still popular in Japan today. It even has rooms themed around a variety of sexy locations, like a classroom, Santa's workshop, and the subway. People are weird. Apart from their horny hotels, Nintendo also has surprising links to violent Japanese crime syndicate, the Yakuza. Nintendo's very first product, a card game called Hanafuda, was insanely popular with gangs. In fact, the name Yakuza literally means useless individual, because the gangs would just sit around and play cards all day. Number 9. VW was inspired by Hitler The VW Beetle is one of the most beloved cars of all time. Too bad its dad is Hitler. Okay, that's not 100% accurate. But it was Hitler who, in 1938, pushed car designer Ferdinand Porsche into designing a cheap, mass-market car for the German people. That car became the Beetle, the first item created by the new Nazi-formed company Volkswagen, or People's Car. So, VW may have been created by the Nazis, and their most popular vehicle was a pet project of history's least favourite moustache model. But at least making cars is pretty harmless, especially compared to what else the company did in World War II. After Germany went to war with the Allies, VW's factories were converted for weapons production. Apart from creating the Schwimmer Wagon and Kerbal Wagon for the German army, VW also helped build V1 rockets. Worst of all, 80% of workers used in VW factories in the war were slave labourers imported from concentration camps. VW actively requested these workers, and by the end of the conflict, they had used over 15,000 slaves in their factories. VW did eventually apologise for this human rights violation in 1998. Number 8. Nike Sweatshops in 1964, a shoe company named after the Roman goddess of victory opened its doors for the first time. You've probably heard of them. Nike have turned themselves into a household name, selling $32 billion worth of sporting goods in 2016 alone. It's just a shame that the company's success is built largely off their willingness to use sweatshops. From the early 70s onward, Nike products have been manufactured using cheaply run factories in China, Taiwan, and South Korea. Nike spent years denying the existence of these factories, but in 1992, it was discovered that the factories were real and that the company was paying workers as little as 14 cents a day. In 2002, Nike started auditing their factories for safety regulations, three decades after they started running them. And it's not just Nike's products that have a dark side to their past. The slogan, Just Do It, was actually inspired by the last words of a convicted murderer. Right before going to the electric chair for shooting two people in Oregon, Gary Gilmore was asked if he had anything to say. He replied, Let's do it. Nike's founders read about this phrase and were inspired to make Just Do It their slogan. Number 7. Bayer Heroin They may not be a company people get massively excited about, but if you've ever popped an aspirin to try and kill that headache from last night's boozy shots, you have Bayer to thank. The German pharmaceutical company has been flogging medicine since 1863, and it hasn't always stuck to selling mild painkillers. In the 19th century, Bayer became the first company to commercially produce diacetylmorphine. They even invented and trademarked its modern name, heroin marketing it as a new wonder drug for children. Bayer claimed flooding your body with heroin could help get rid of colds and coughs, which is like trying to get rid of a stomach ulcer by drinking bleach. To be fair to Bayer, no one was aware of heroin's addictive nature and dangerous properties when the company started selling the drug. But they kept churning it out until 1912, 13 years after medical reports had proven just how addictive heroin is. Number 6. Listerine is a lie. What do you do if no one wants to buy your company's average antiseptic? You invent a medical condition and repackage your product as the only cure, obviously. Listerine has existed since the 1880s, when it served as a disinfectant for people to apply to oral wounds. After all, it's pretty hard to stick a plaster over the inside of your mouth. But antiseptic wasn't moving stock in the way founder Jordan Wheat Lambert wanted. So, in a stroke of Machiavellian genius slash manipulative douchebaggery, Lambert created the medical term halitosis. Taking the Latin word halitus, meaning breath, and then adding osis to make it seem a bit more sciencey, he invented a completely fictional medical condition around bad breath. Sales skyrocketed with America's new middle class, many of whom had more money than sense, and none of whom wanted to be the only person in their friend group with smelly breath. The marketing swindle turned Listerine from an obscure over-the-counter antiseptic into an internationally recognised brand. Number 5. IKEA's Slaves IKEA seems like a fairly nice company. They're just a bunch of polite Swedes who want to sell you cheap furniture with funny names and half the pieces missing. It's a noble goal. That's why it's so heartbreaking to know that IKEA's past is linked with slavery. Like, actual, human slavery. It's not even the ancient past either, we're talking about the 1970s. That's when IKEA decided to build strong ties with the USSR. It might seem kind of strange for a business to start cuddling up with the communist nation, but IKEA had their reasons. 
The USSR provided them with cheap labor in East Germany, perfect for making furniture parts. The reason this labor was so cheap is that the workers were unpaid political prisoners, a mixed bag of anti-communist protesters, and people who tried to escape the hell of East Germany over the Berlin Wall, and IKEA knew it. IKEA continued to benefit from the forced labor until the collapse of East Germany in 1989. And they weren't the only ones. Supermarkets Audi and electrical supply shop Siemens also took advantage of the USSR's, let's say, lax attitude towards working conditions. Number four, Ford hated Jews. Henry Ford, the founder of the multi-billion dollar car company Ford, was many things. A genius, inventor, a shrewd businessman, and a proud recipient of the Grand Cross of the German Eagle. Yes, really. You see, when not designing cars, Ford loved nothing more than spreading conspiracy theories about America's Jewish population. He even bought an entire newspaper, the Dearborn Independent, just so he could turn it into an old media version of the Daily Stormer. Distributing the newspaper from every Ford franchise across America, the industrialist oversaw the publication of articles like Jewish Jazz, Moron Music, and The Peril of Baseball, Too Much Jew. These and the other, quote-unquote, best articles from the Dearborn Independence 91 issue were later collated into a four-volume book called The International Jew. Selling four and a half million copies, the book was liked by one group in particular, the Nazis. Himmler praised Ford's writing, and Hitler himself said, You can tell her Ford that I am a great admirer of his. Henry Ford is my inspiration. On Ford's 75th birthday, the Nazis would even send over a representative to give the car maker a birthday card from Hitler and a big swastika medal. Number three, Nestle's powdered milk. You may know them as the chocolate manufacturer who made Kit Kats, Aero, Smarties, Munchies, and basically half the candy bars we all compulsively shove into our mouth holes. But to those in Asia, Africa, and Latin America, Nestle is best known for its dodgy attempts to sell powdered milk to poverty-stricken mothers. In the 1970s, the US Senate and World Health Organization blew the lid off Nestle's immoral sales tactic. The company had been dressing up employees as nurses and sending them to give out free portions of powdered milk to new mothers. This not only gave the appearance of medical backing to powdered milk, but it also caused the mothers to stop lactating. At this point, Nestle stopped giving out their samples for free, basically forcing impoverished families to buy their product or let their babies starve. Research by the World Health Organization found that poor mothers usually couldn't afford enough baby powder for a healthy portion. Powder-using mothers frequently had underweight babies, and to this day, the mortality rate of the Nestle-fed children is five times higher than that of the naturally breastfed ones. Nestle still sells $11 billion worth of baby formula a year. Number two, IBM aids the Holocaust. VW may not have an origin story that it's proud of, but at least companies based in Germany didn't have much choice except to partake in the nation's whole Nazi phase. Technology company IBM, on the other hand, were 100% American. But they weren't about to let a little thing like that stop them from aiding the Nazis in one of the worst acts in human history. Back before becoming a computer manufacturer, IBM was best known for their punch card organization system. Their Hollerith machine allowed the making of cards with coded information, cards which could then be stored in giant archives. Confusing and inconvenient as it was, the technology was revolutionary at the time, and the Nazis loved it. After marching through half of Europe, the Germans would use the punch card system to keep track of their reluctant new populations. They found it particularly useful for categorizing the identities of Jews, gypsies, homosexuals, and anyone they found undesirable. The IBM punch cards were even used at the Holocaust death camps, allowing the Nazis to codify exactly who would die and how. For example, prisoner code 8 meant Jew, camp code 001 meant Auschwitz, and status code 6 meant gas chamber. Internal IBM memos discovered after the war showed that IBM knew what was happening and made no efforts to stop or even denounce it. Number 1. Jaquita overthrows governments We've been through some pretty shady business in this video, but while the other companies listed all have their dark origins, the top spot has to go to United Fruit, the corporation that single-handedly overthrew a government. If you don't recognize the name, it's probably because in 1984 they rebranded as Jaquita Brand International. Today, they're a multi-billion dollar company and the largest distributor of bananas in the world, but their path to success was far from an honest one. In 1928, United Fruit's factory workers in Colombia staged a strike, complaining that they only wanted to work six days a week. So, the Colombian army, under pressure from United Fruit, opened fire on the workers and killed either 47 or 3,000 people. You can guess which estimate was United Fruit's. And as if that wasn't bad enough, in 1951, the company lobbied Eisenhower's administration to overthrow the democratically elected government of Guatemala. With Guatemala's new president Arbenz wanting to forcibly purchase their land, United Fruit teamed up with the CIA to smear him as communist. United Fruit convinced the US populace that Guatemala was a commie powerhouse, in part by making the hilariously named documentary Why the Kremlin Hates Bananas. They then left it to the CIA to bankroll Guatemalan rebels, who killed Arbenz, toppled the government, and installed a right-wing dictator. Still, at least we all have bananas now. 
So, that was 10 disturbing origin stories behind your favourite companies. Which story disturbed you the most? Did we leave any companies with dodgy pasts off the list? Let us know in the comments below. And if you want more up-to-date stories of corporate pulling the strings, check out 10 companies that secretly controlled the world, playing now.